Guys, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. I've been reading through the comments on the video I put out last night and on the tweet I put out, which is explaining the performance-based SR removed. What I'm gonna do in this video is really explain this, because I don't think I did a very good job of it in the last video. This is a good thing for everybody involved, even if you are below diamond, because it means Blizzard are looking at the idea of bringing this out for every single rank. And I hope that at some point we do get this for every single rank. Okay, guys, let's get stuck into this. So we have this tweet here, and I think this is an absolutely excellent tweet, which sort of brings together all of the responses that I've been seeing, because there's been responses of people who just don't understand, and they're like, oh my god, this is the most elitist load of crap I've ever heard. And, and sure it is, because Diamond is like top 20% of players. It's not, that isn't the, the bulk of the community, is it? So that's not great. However, let me just read this tweet, because I think this does an excellent job. Rank does matter, confirmed. Reading winning should only matter for Diamond Plus made me sad, angry, and frustrated. I hope there can be a way for Platinum Below to also be part of this huge and great change. Getting decent group combos is no problem exclusive to the elite. That is absolutely 100% true. Because it's not like, oh, everything is fine below Diamond and then suddenly everything gets really bad and everyone thinks they're awesome and they're just going to one trick and there's going to be all these terrible team comps above that. This happens at every level of Overwatch. The only difference in the tiers of Overwatch is the players are, well, mechanically a little bit better, but they're still players of Overwatch and they still would benefit from having this system rolled out to everybody. Anyway, let me explain what this is, guys. So, Performance-based SR is what we've got right now. What this does is if you're a really good player at any level of the game and you, like, let's say if, I'll give you a, a very loose example. So let's say I, for some reason, uh, uh, pick up an account and start playing in silver, right? I would be much better than silver level players. So after I play in that game, my stats would be so high, the game would go, hang on a minute, this player is much better than silver players on, let's say, Tracer. So we're going to give him more SR. And then if I do it again, it's going to give me more SR. If I do it again, it's going to give me more SR. This is a way of fast correcting. What that does is it pushes you to the ranks you should be at quicker. So in theory, performance-based SR is a good thing. So why does performance-based SR fall down on its face? And why does everybody hate performance-based SR? Well, it's more extreme at the higher levels, but this happens at every level of the game. Um, wand tricks are a bit of an issue. So when you look at the famous sort of Torbjorn and Symmetra wand tricks and all of that stuff, they're very high, but with very minimal win rates. What's actually happening is they're maintaining a lot of SR per win because they are way better than the average hero or the average player at the level they're at. So if you've got like, and now this is again a very high rated example, so if you've got like a 4,300 rated Symmetra player and all they do is play Symmetra, there's not that many Symmetras at that level of the game. So the game would think, actually, you know what, this player is really good, so they get more SR when they win because they're way better than the Symmetra players at their level. And when they lose, they don't lose that much SR. What that means is you get this crazy inflation of players who are not really playing to win in a sense, but they're really highly rated. However, ignore all of this, ignore all of the elite rated players and all of that stuff. This happens at every tier of the game. So what happens with performance-based SR is you get players who are higher than they should be um, because they're just basically playing one player. Now, what is my issue with that? Okay, I'm, I'm not, I don't really have an issue as such with those players being higher rated because obviously they're probably pretty good with those heroes. The big thing is Overwatch is a team game. This is why this is such a huge announcement from Scott Mercer where he says, we're going to remove performance-based SR and everybody Diamond Plus You'll, you'll get the same SR. So I don't know what this will be. Maybe it'll be 25 SR for a win, 25 SR for a loss. That means the whole team has to play together to win. No longer is it about just picking a hero you know you can play because you know if you lose, you'll only lose like 12 SR. But if you win, you'll gain 30 SR or something absolutely crazy. And that does happen. And that is very frustrating to play with. So where could this go for all of us? And what do I want to see this actually be rolled out to in the future? Well, See this as a test, guys, right? But please see this as a step in the right direction. If they just left competitive again, everybody would be raging. Now, the thing with this is it could potentially give us a, like a type of um, group forming ability in the game, right? So you think right now, you press play, you go into competitive. Now, admittedly, this will still be the case for players below Diamond, but I hope that will change in the future. But you press play, you go into the queue, you end up with a load of other players. Everybody just picks the hero they want to play. Nobody really forms a group. Nobody really comes up with a plan or a tactic or anything like that. And then everybody just plays it like quick play and whatever. Nobody cares. And then we go again. However, 
if everybody's points are related to the win, which they are right now, sure, but this means that it doesn't matter what hero you're playing, the game literally doesn't care what your stats are in the game. All it's going to care about is if you win. So what that suddenly means is you won't sit there padding stats or doing crazy things. And Scott even says this in his post. What you'll do instead is you'll go, okay, well, I really, really, really like playing Pharah, but the enemy team have got a McCree and a soldier. So before I might have just carried on playing Pharah, but now we need to win. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap to maybe uh, something completely different. Like we don't have a diva, so I'm going to play a diva to mess up with those... That's what Overwatch is about. That is the brilliance of this game. If this change enables that, I am going to be so happy, and it, this is a step in the right direction. Then what I hope happens in the future is Blizzard look back at this and go, you know what, guys? We're actually going to roll this out to the other ranks because this needs to happen. Because it's okay, like I said, focusing on Diamond Plus. And I, like I said, a lot of the comments I noticed were, oh, but Star, you like this because, you know, you're playing at that level and all of this stuff. But you have to understand this stuff will trickle down and it needs to trickle down. So let me just touch on why they would keep performance-based SR at lower ranks. Now, remember, most of the population is between sort of diamond and gold. Uh, they're not in, uh, sorry, uh, platinum and gold. Um, that's where most of the players are. So why would Scott want to keep the performance-based SR there? Well, if you are really, really good, like really good, and you're playing way above that level, then the games won't be that balanced yet. So if you, you, you guys have probably seen this. You go into a game and there might be a McCree who's just insane and kills everybody. You're like, what the hell? This guy's ridiculous. What's he doing at this level? Well, performance-based SR will get rid of that player really quick. So it won't be in your games because you'll never get better at Overwatch if you're playing against people who are just wrecking you completely. So it makes sense to sort of push these players into their own, like get them out of lower ranks faster, right? The thing is though, Right, and this is the big, big thing. Um, if you keep performance-based SR at the lower levels, then the lower levels still suffer from the problem everybody is suffering from right now. And that won't change. What I want you guys to realize from all of this stuff is don't be like, oh God, Star, you only like this because you're elitist or whatever. I'm not elitist. I, I totally am not elitist. This is a huge change because it means Blizzard are finally changing the way competitive matchmaking works. Now, the whole goal of Overwatch is to go into a game, play as a team, beat the enemy team, and win. Everybody is accountable on that team. It's not about, oh, Soldier played so so much better, the, like, you know, whatever. Soldier can just have less points because we lost, you know, but really we didn't need a Soldier then, so maybe he was the reason why we lost the game. Everybody else suffers as a result. Of course, if you try and flex right now, so if you don't maybe play Reinhardt at all, but you know you need a tank, and you play a tank and you don't play very well at your level, and you lose the game, you will lose a lot of points. This is terrible. This is absolutely terrible design, and that should not be in the game anyway. So the fact that they're going to remove that is great. The problem is, though, this is not for all of the ranks right now. And when it is for all of the ranks, that's going to make a huge difference to the game because everybody at every level of this game needs to play to win. That's what we should be doing. It's a full team effort. It's not, I'm going to solo carry because i got news for you guys. You can't really solo carry in Overwatch. Yes, sure, if you take a Grandmaster player and put them in a Platinum game, they will solo carry. But if you put a Grandmaster player in a High Plat game, you know what? I don't think they will carry because platinum players are not stupid. Gold players are not stupid. There are like, there are players out there that are really, really good. And you know what really highlights this to me? When I've played Deathmatch, I know Deathmatch is not exactly like the way Overwatch is meant to be played, but there'll be players in Deathmatch and I'll be like, wow, that guy's insanely good. I'll look at the stats and this guy will barely be platinum. I'm like, what? How is that even possible? Then I look at how many games they've played and well, they've hardly played any games in competitive because clearly they've been tilted off the planet because of loads of different reasons. So this needs to extend to all of the ranks and hopefully guys, this will in time. You just need to be, you just need to sort of bear with this and see this as a test and see this as a, a path to, to brighter things. The future will look bright for Overwatch if this is going to happen. And I just want to touch on one last thing before I finish this video. Now, Overwatch League is a thing, and I've been watching the preseason. I've, probably most of you guys haven't, but that doesn't matter. I'm going to start putting out some videos showing you guys how that's actually working, like especially for Pro Overanalyzed. But there is one thing I think happens with Overwatch League. You watch Overwatch League, and then you're like, Oh my days, this is so good. These are the best players. Like you watch London Spitfire, arguably the best team. It is ridiculous. They're players like Birdring and Rascal. They play Tracer, they play McCree. They, and I'm looking at those guys like, oh my God, I want to do this. And then after watching their games, I go into competitive 
and it's just a disaster because there's people who are toxic, people who are trolls, people who are not playing to win, which is the biggest problem, I, I, I would say, uh, and all of these issues. And then suddenly you're like, why am I even bothering playing this game? And when that's happening to me, it's, it was. I think this might sound really strange to say and really stupid because this is just a game at the end of the day. But I think it was genuinely getting me down that competitive was such a terrible experience because at the start of Overwatch's life, Competitive was really fun as people were trying to work out what's going on with Overwatch, you know, the meta, what heroes do what, how we play as a team. But then from like season three onwards, it started to really go downhill. And that's a shame. This is a massive change, guys. Don't think that I'm elitist or this, that I'm just like, wow, this is a great change. Everyone's going to love it. You know, so you better love it because Stylosa loves it. No, no, no. I hope in this video I've explained why this makes a huge, huge difference to Overwatch. Guys, I've been Stylosa and this is Unit Lost. Please, please, please keep being very honest in the comments below because this is a giant community. Overwatch is a giant game. We've obviously got a very strong voice here. So if we can air our opinions and I can look at these comments and we can start building up discussion, you go into the Discord, which is discord.gg forward slash Unit Lost. Talk about how you feel about the game, what's going on with the game. These are things which will save Overwatch because Overwatch competitive, even if you don't play Overwatch competitive, this is the game mode that will keep interest in Overwatch as time goes on. And this is a very, very, very minor change. And well, on the face of it, it's a minor change in the grand scheme of things, but it's actually huge because it will promote playing to win. And I hope this gets filtered down to the other tiers. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been Salos and this is Unit Lost. Again, let me know what you think about all of this in the comments below. I've done my very best here to explain this um, in as much detail as I can without being too like over the top with like terminology and stuff. So I hope you guys, you know, can kind of understand where I'm coming from. All right, guys, I'm Insalo, so this is Unit Lost. If you enjoyed the video, then like the video. You can follow me on Twitter, which is at Unit Lost Gaming, if you like pictures of dogs in the snow. And I will catch you guys on the next one. Toodaloo.